Hey everybody, I'm Jeff. And I'm Linda. And today we're going to leave our campsite here at Bear Tree and we are going to go hike a portion of the Virginia Creeper Trail. Mm -hmm. I'm going to turn this over to Linda. She's going to tell you a little bit of background on the trail and then we'll take a look at the map. The Virginia Creeper Trail is actually about 33.4 miles long. It's a long trail and um, it stretches from the town of Abingdon all the way south to the North Carolina border um, right near White Top Station, Virginia. Uh, now, it has an interesting history behind it. It says that it was originally a Native American footpath and by the very early 1900s, um, a man named Mingi came through and formed a railroad that connected the towns of Abingdon and Damascus. Um, along that portion of what is now that, that section of trail. And by 1905, somebody else uh, a, from a lumber company had come in and created more railroad tracks that led all the way to Elkton, North Carolina. And um, the, or Elk Land, North Carolina. Um, but, it, you know, they hauled all kinds of things. Iron ore, they, hi, they hauled supplies, they hauled passengers. Uh, but it was a very winding um, trail up and down these mountains and the old steam locomotives really would struggle along the, this section of railroad and that's how it actually got its name the Virginia Creeper because of those you know those steam engines having to kind of creep along slowly uh, they had to face things like washouts and rock slides so there were a lot of a lot of dangers along the route that they had to take they had to be careful of so they would take it kind of slow along this path, but it's not actually named after the plant like we thought. I mean, you know, there's that five-leafed um, Virginia creeper uh, that grows everywhere around here, and um, it's it's not actually named after that. It's the steam locomotive, but um, it wasn't actually, you know, the perils of the journey that, that shut down the railroad. It was economics. Um, even before the Great Depression, it was kind of a struggling railroad, and uh, they weren't really turning a profit anymore. So the last run for the railroad was March 31st, 1977. After that, they shut it down, and we're imagining that they probably pulled up the railroad tracks. But there are bridges and trestles that the railroads used. We're hoping that maybe those are still there, because uh, getting to walk across a, a railroad trestle would be kind of cool. So very interesting history behind it. Um, it was also used by European pioneers back in the day, including Daniel Boone. So um, kind of a kind of a cool path, and I'm sort of imagining that it very well could be haunted as well. Wondering if maybe haunted by Native Americans, haunted by pioneers that traveled that path, or even haunted by, you know, railroads, like a ghost, you know, train. ghost trains, because of all the perils along the journey. So we're looking at the map here. Mm -hmm. And what you have, over in the west, you have the town of Abingdon. That's the Abingdon Trailhead. And they give you little symbols to tell you, you know, what all you can find at that particular trailhead. But it follows the path. It looks like it goes east for the most part, kind of snaking around here, uh, much like a river would. And it sure does have a lot of curves and, and, and you know, look like, like these, these little tight curves all through here. So that must have been quite a journey for a railroad. Yeah. And it also, people horseback ride, mm -hmm. bike ride. Yep. Hike. Yep. Non-motorized traffic only. Yep. You can keep your dogs, but they must be on a leash. Um, bikers, hikers. It's open to pretty much everybody. It looks like some interesting, interesting places. Yeah, and it goes through private property. It does. Yep. Yeah, a lot of the trail is actually private property, um, but, you know, they've kind of given the right-of-way to this trail. And, you know, so long as you're respectful of the trail and of nature and of the people that own the land, uh, there's no reason you can't go through there. So if you see Bear Tree Campground... I thought that was all water. That's us. Okay. This is the little Bear Tree Lake, the Bear Tree Campground Lake that we were at just all right. yesterday. Yeah, we were there yesterday. Yep. This would be Bear Tree Gap Road that comes down, and you see this 58, this black line right here is yes. Jeb Stewart Highway. So we'll be getting on at Creek Junction. Yes. Okay, so that blue, what is that? That's not, 
I thought it was. I thought it was like this thing goes all across the water, like there's a bunch of trestles. No, the blue is actually probably meant to be green. I believe that is the um, national forest land. See, it's just the coloring is a little bit off. On oh, the map. okay. But the but the but the, what you see that looks like light blue here is actually the uh, Washington Jefferson National Forest. All right. Well, let's head down to Creek Junction and just take a look at this trail. See what we can see from our perspective. So you may be wondering on a hike like this, what do you take? If we're actually doing the full 30 miles, we'd be taking a lot more, we really would. You wanna have a first aid kit, of course, some basic stuff, some band-aids, maybe some triple antibiotic ointment and such. We don't know what kind of insects we're gonna encounter up there, so we wanna have some off. We're gonna pack that in this little backpack here, okay? I also have the action camera, the GoPro Hero 8, I believe this is the one, mm -hmm. edition. And this is going to give us the ability to record on the trail and it's set to something to the effect of super view, which it really, it kind of puts a fisheye effect on there, but it really shows the whole area that's around you, which is kind of cool because you can go through these different effects. And I looked at the tent and uh, we could see that each effect, it kind of gave you less and less of the surrounding. So this is gonna give us some good video on the trail. We got a couple extra batteries for that. I have this half charged power bank. Uh, normally you'd want it fully charged, but I charged a, a phone on it last night. So it's half charged. But this thing is a cool thing because for one, there's jumper cables in here that can hook up and you can actually jump start your car. And you see, I'll show you, there's a little, there's little jumper cables in there. So if your car doesn't start, you can jump start it with that. It has a light on the side, a fairly bright light. Hmm. It, it can you can plug in a regular plug okay or you can charge usb items so this is going with us just in case you never know what happens and if you get stuck out there for an uh, undesirable amount of time which i can't imagine an undesirable amount of time out in the woods and now it seems fun we're gonna have our map which is important toilet paper also we want to have some snacks so i have these bigs pepperoni pizza little caesar's flavored seeds and what's cool about these two it's kind of like hansel and gretel if you get lost you just kind of take these and drop them along your way and one of two things happens like you get lost you can follow them back or a bear comes along behind you eating the seeds and when he runs out of seeds you're his next meal i don't know but either way we got to have some of these both for snacking on and for marking our trail and i picked up these these are called Venture Wipes. I saw these at a little store that we went to yesterday and I had to get them just because they have a tent on them. They're called Venture Wipes. They're probably no different than the Weiss Wipes, but uh, it says Big Wipes, Big Clean. And these guys, they can be found on Facebook and Instagram and Twitter and all that stuff at Venture Wipes. So if we don't use these during the course of this, whether we do or not, at some point, we're gonna do a review of these wipes. All right, and we'll tag them in it. So kind of give them a shout out and maybe they'll give us a shout out. We don't know. But these are the essentials and of course, plenty of water. So I have this nice Coleman canteen right here. Ooh, that is nice. Where'd you get that? I got that from Linda, right? <laughs> and it's a hard plastic canteen. So it's pretty, it seems pretty durable. Holds a good amount of water. Has a nice little strap that's adjustable. So this will be going with us on the hike. So we've arrived here at the Green Cove Visitor Center. When we came out of the park, Bear Tree Road made a left on Jeb Stewart. And on the right, there was something that said Creeper Junction. Yeah. But we started going down the dirt road and it said private. So we kind of aborted that. Came down a few miles later, made a right, I don't know what road that was, 58, yeah, I, think I think it yeah. was. And we came down to the Green Cove Visitor Center. There's a historical sign. I see the trail crossing the street here, mm -hmm. uh, which is pretty cool. We saw all the bikes, so we figured this yeah. must be it. Let's take a look at some of the historical signs and some of the things around the Visitor Center before we hit on the trail. Look at this painting, the Virginia Creeper. It's like a lith lithograph, I think. Yeah, and we got the train coming by there. This work is one of O. Winston Link's most revered photographs. Mr. Link's legacy is having captured the end of the golden age of the railroad in this country. His innovative techniques with light and dark were years ahead of his time. 
This particular photograph symbolizes technology transforming the face of rural America. The tracks that were once the railroad have been removed, there's one answer to our question, leaving the national treasure known as the Virginia Creeper Trail. It's called Maud Bows to the Virginia Creeper. You can see the horse, which is obviously Maud. Oh, and then there's some people on the porch there. Look at that, yeah. the dog, isn't that neat? So here we can see where the trail crosses the road. Coming up to the Green Cove Station, it has a little bit of information about it. Green Cove Station was a rail stop along the Virginia Creeper Railroad that ran from Abingdon, Virginia to Todd, North Carolina. Built by the Virginia Carolina Railroad about 1914, it also served as a post office, general store, and telegraph office, managed primarily by William M. Buchanan, Buchanan famed photographer O. Winston Link memorialized memorialized this building in his 1956 photo, and that's the one that we saw up there where Maud Bowles the Virginia Creeper. So some pretty cool things here, and here's the neat sign for the Virginia Creeper Trail. That this is train themed made me more excited about it. Right. I just think that's awesome. That's what I'm thinking. Okay, and I need my wallet because this looks like a, they have some stuff for sale here. <laughs> Let's check it out. Okay. It's pretty cool right here. Remnants of the railroad, huh? Yeah. They had a nice little picnic area over here. there's the bathrooms so every so many miles they have stops like this with the bathrooms and such so we can't actually go into the building at this time but there are some neat shirts here with the virginia creeper trail that's neat got some bandanas oh and they have the photograph for sale look at that and what's cool is like if you're biking down this trail or something like that and you came up here, you'd be like, oh, I want to get it shipped. Yeah, it doesn't have that. So that's yeah, pretty neat. Yeah, that's <laughs> Unlike this one, the design on it. Yeah, I saw that. The, the track. The, 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 like the, the bicycle, bicycle chain. Yeah. yeah. And there's some other ones up there for little kids. Yep. They have hats. They have all kinds of neat things. Yeah, they also have candy for sale. Oh, and, nice. water. and water. Yeah. Okay, so taking a look at the trail before we go we've got a little bit of a haul that we made at yep. the green cove station some cool things we'll show those at the end we'll show what we got here right but they had some Smokey the bear stickers they did how cool is that so you are here you are here there's green cove see the little railroad little yes steam engine so we could either take the north section which i'm guessing i mean it's hard to tell because the it's straight up in the sky sure is so i'm guessing maybe this way that you're looking is north all right does that way look like it might take us to a trestle or no i don't know it's you can't really tell i mean you can see where it crosses the water in some points yeah but uh that's the end of the trail right there yeah but we're just taking a small section of it because we also have to walk back we have to find some supplies right here's something right here look at this this shows you one of the trestles oh, along yeah, the trail that's neat. So I believe we're heading north on the trail and not too far down this way we should be coming to a trestle which is one of the reasons that we picked this here we see taylor's valley creek junction and damascus so 14 miles to damascus three miles to creek junction that's the road we started to go down but it said private drive so here's some of the scenery along the trail. Beautiful farmland, rolling hills. So I have to say, this is pretty cool. Walking down this trail, Daniel Boone has always been a legend in my book. Yes. You know, someone that I've always been a fan of. Uh, it's so cool thinking that we are walking in his footsteps right now as we're walking down this trail, like Daniel Boone walked down this trail how awesome is that that is pretty cool definitely 
so just at first glance, I'd have to say this is probably not the kind of trail that you're going to find Bigfoot down. That was kind of our idea was to come walk down this trail and see if we could find any evidence of them, but not knowing what the trail is like, you know, you, you have no idea. It's just constant traffic. I mean, there's, there's constantly bikes coming through here. You have to dodge the bikes. You have to step to the side and allow them to pass. So, you know, I really don't think that this is going to be a place to find them. However, I did see a lot of other trails in the local area, in the Mount Rogers area, where it looked like we probably could find Bigfoot. So maybe tomorrow or the next day we might have to get out and explore one of those. Because this is just not going to be Bigfoot country. It's not. And I'm not sure the extent of this trail, though. You know, if, if Bigfoot has been in these parts for some time, and I'm sure we're just leaving a, a station here. There are some junctions along the way and such. But I'll bet there's parts of the trail that are perhaps more secluded. Probably. I'm just not sure what those parts would be. Well, I'm not either. But it's, keep in mind, it's like I said, it's like a 36-mile trail. Yeah. So there could be parts. That, and being that we don't have cell service anywhere in this area, I mean, it's already out there. So being that the age of this trail, how long it's been here and such, perhaps Bigfoot knows when there's no one on this trail. He knows at night there's no bikers coming along here. And this is a perfect area for him to go uh, from one place to the next. It could be. Because he's not going to run along the highway. No, definitely not. But I think that a lot of this section is going to be exactly what we see here. It's going to be flanked by, you know, private property. Um, homes and things that did say the greater, greater extent of the trail is actually private property. So, um, you know, that just tells you right there that it's probably going to be some farms and some buildings along the way. Right. And it does go adjacent somewhat to the Appalachian Trail in areas. Yeah, you said it runs parallel to it a little while. In some places, it almost seemed like it intersected with it on that map. Huh. I'm walking along and I see this odd looking rock and of course it drew my eye. I had to stop and take a look at it. This is actually an old railroad spike and it looks like it's been laying around here forever. I mean, you can tell how corroded it is um, and how it's bent like that. Once it gets bent like that, it's kind of like a nail. It's one of those that you really can't use much anymore. So I don't know. Uh, this is definitely a keeper. We tend to watch out. Cars coming. We, or vehicles. Cars. Yeah. <laughs> we tend to um, collect these from everywhere that we go. Hello. And uh, I think this is definitely going in the backpack and going on the shelf at home. Yeah. Yeah. And we definitely, definitely need to keep a souvenir. Like, that's yes. so cool because that could have been here for 100 years. I know. It really yeah. could have. It could have been here for 100 years. And, um, but but we, we did get a warning from somebody that somebody came up on a bicycle. He was coming up the opposite direction of all the, the bikers you see here and said that about 60 yards yards ahead off to the side of the road, there was a uh, a copperhead. Down that way where they're going. Right where they're going. Yeah, so. so it won't be there by the time we get there. If it is, we got to remember, no step on snack. Yeah. Okay. So we're here now about where that guy said he saw the snake. And it is a perfect place for one. Yep. It's all the clover and stuff. Yeah, all these weeds growing on the sides of the road here would be obscuring one pretty well. And what's going to suck about it is coming back if he's in the middle of the path. Yeah. Yeah, because I didn't bring my gun. My gun has uh, one round of snake shot in it. And uh, I didn't bring it because I figured, you know, looking at this trail, it didn't look like it would be that secluded. It didn't right. look like it would be the kind of place where you'd find a snake. So. There's a bug on your leg. Okay. Look, that just goes to show you, you got to stay very observant and watch wherever you go. And you got to kick rocks because the more noise you make, the more likely something that's in the trailer is going to go away. That's exactly right. So. And then there's some vacation rentals over here too. Look at that neat old barn with the wheel up against it. That's a neat place. All right. But that's a vacation rental up there. I don't know if that's the vacation rental up in there. But it says Biker's Loft, Green Cove Cottage. That's pretty neat. Heading back on down the trail. All right. So we've got a nice little creek kind of following us along here through the mountain laurel. 
And Linda said that may be the Lost Creek. Yeah, that's Bless kind you. of what I'm wondering because the closer we get to um, the first junction that we passed, that we kind of questioned whether or not it was private property or not, it was Creek Junction. Uh, the closer we got to that, uh, the closer you get to what, what they said was Lost Creek Junction Cabin, I believe is what it is. You can rent that cabin. It was booked out when I looked for a place for us to camp. Um, and so we, we definitely couldn't get it and um, a little more expensive than campground camp camping But it would be kind of a cool place to stay sometime Especially if it's right along the trail here off to the side of it Because uh, you know, it might be a haunted cabin and that would be really cool I don't know. We are definitely coming out to an opening here. So perhaps it is one of the trestles. We've got some sheep up on the hill. Right. Looks like a Christmas tree farm over here. Kind of just panning around. This is beautiful. It is. Very nice, isn't it? What a lovely place to live. Like, this is just gorgeous. Yeah. And you have to cross over this kind of precarious looking bridge to be able to get up to your house. Yeah. That's pretty cool. Yeah. But yeah, they do have quite a few sheep up on the hill there, don't they? Yeah. And look how high up these Christmas trees go, huh? Mm. This must have been the Christmas tree farm that Alex noticed. Yeah. We might have to come out here to get a Christmas tree, maybe. Oh, but here, yeah, especially when you add up the gas to get out here, that's for sure. How's it going? So coming down here, we got another sign that says the Virginia Creeper Trail. Love the sign, though. I, I do. I like the train going over the trestle. Closed vehicles. And perhaps this is the trestle here. Shall we take a look? Yes. Probably. Look at the berries. Ah, some snacks along the way there, yeah. huh? Yeah, definitely. A lot of berries. A lot of them. Not quite ripe though. Needs to be a little more ripe. So this isn't exactly what I was thinking of in the way of trestles, but it is nice. A nice bridge. The so brook just kind of curves along. Down in a holler. I think that might be where we are. I could be wrong. But there's definitely some scenery around here. It's not quite as remote as I thought it would be, but a lot of scenery. And perhaps Trestle 44 is right ahead. I'm guessing that what they did was that this was probably a train trestle at this location uh, that crossed this little creek. But of course, when the National Park Service came through and decided to start kind of renovating and making this into a, a biking and a walking trail, they probably just had to rebuild. Because uh, I, I imagine some of these train trestles, they would have been from the early 1900s. Uh, so it would have been a really, you know, old train trestle at that point probably not safe for people to walk and bike across at any for any length of time so they would have had to rebuild it they would have had to tear down the old trestle and uh and put this plus the train trestles i've walked along you would actually look down between the railroad ties yep. and you would see the water going underneath you it's kind of creepy so here not creepy but it can be unsettling depending on how high the trestle is so here to make it accessible by bikes and uh, horses and whatever else they ride along this trail they probably felt the need to do this and to uh, put these rails on the side look at how there's two or three trees that just tipped over and they're being precariously held up by these other trees on this side of the bank but it pulled roots and all it's almost like it pulled an entire chunk of the river of the creek bank up with it are you suggesting that this could be the work of Bigfoot? No, I'm just saying that it's kind of, uh, it's definitely the work of Mother Nature per se, but you know, it is interesting the way it's pulled that whole section up like that. Kind of cool. 
Also, there's like some bricks down there. Yeah, because the trees look like they're still alive. Like that thing is still living. Yeah. It's, it's still covered with foliage. That's right. All right, so we are coming up on the next trestle here, perhaps. And it's another small one. Like I said, not like I was thinking like way up, crossing over this huge valley or something like that. But it's neat nonetheless. Here's the stream coming down alongside of it here. Yep. As it comes out of the mountain laurel and flows down right under this trestle. Which now you wouldn't suspect is anything more than a bridge, but wow, look at the other side. Look at these rocks, these ledges here. You could just see a train coming around this with the smoke coming out of its stack. And there's the stream coming out the other side of the bridge. This rock ledge is pretty impressive, isn't it? It's very impressive, yeah. Yeah, and I got a nice photograph down the trail with the trail in kind of the bottom left-hand corner of the view and uh, got a lot of this rock on the side, but I would imagine this would be a wonderful place for a lot of wildlife to live, you know, hidden underneath the little crevices and in the crooks and crannies of all the rock. And uh, imagine it would also be a good place for the rocks to fall off and potentially just dislodge a train coming down the tracks as well. And it's so nice as you're walking along here, you still hear the roar of the stream down below it kind of went under the trail and now it runs alongside of it so what a beautiful walk Every once in a while, an occasional car. It's all right. Ooh. Big rock. That's pretty neat. Trees growing out of it. Yeah, and you can see the roots of some of the mountain boil coming out of the side. Is this Virginia creeper along the side here? No. So it looks like we're coming down to another crossing here in the trail or another clearing. And it says Chestnut Mountain Road. Now we did see Chestnut Mountain Road at one point, did we not? Yes, we did. And it actually wasn't very far from the uh, Creek Junction. We, we had passed Creek Junction and then we came upon the Chestnut Mountain Road. So I would imagine maybe another half a mile to a mile up the road here would be the uh, the Creek Junction. But uh, I don't know. This may be the end here. I just have to see this abandoned building. Really. Yes. I noticed this yeah. house as we're coming out here. 
And there's the street sign, Chestnut, Chestnut Mountain Road. Yeah. And uh, it's definitely something that you got to check out. And it's the perfect setting for this right now. With the day being overcast, low rumble of thunder in the background. Look at that place. Well, it's quite a nice place. What a shame. And it doesn't look like it's been abandoned for too long. They've got a satellite dish mounted to the side of the building. Yeah, satellite dish. Yeah, so. But it's obvious that the uh, what looks like the front porch, the roof of it is completely caved in and fallen down. But you still do see some panes of glass left in there. It's, uh, it's just a shame. It's probably a very well-built house probably from turn of the century. So I bet it's in one piece on the inside. Oh yeah, I'd like to go inside, Me take too. a look. And unfortunately, I think it's private property. It looks like there used to be a sign over here, signpost down there in the, in the leaves. Mm -hmm. But let's come down this way. It looks like there's another sign that might tell us something. And then we'll take a look at the map and just see exactly where we are. So for a, a good majority of the time that we've been along here, we've actually had a road that's running parallel to it. Um, but then it did, in addition to the road, we've also had water. There's creek that runs right along parallel to the road. Uh, we see the creek coming up this way, but the creek kind of stops right there. This does not give us a real good indication of any trestles. So the only way we have to look and tell where we are is by taking a look at some of these. See, boom, there's a gate right there, what they call a gate. And I'm wondering if that gate is actually this one right here. I wonder if that's considered a gate. It's hard to say. It is hard to say. But we know we're on this side of Creek Junction. We don't think we've gotten to Creek Junction quite yet. So we must be somewhere along here. The last one was mile marker 28. I didn't see any mile marker back there, but we may have missed it. Oh, look, it is a, that is a trestle, the yeah. little red triangles. So we started here, we hit those two trestles, we came up a little further. So we've gotta be in this area somewhere, I'm guessing, right? Yes, yeah, so we're still away from Creek Junction. Yeah, we are still a ways, longer than I thought. So, kind of a cool area. I mean, certainly a beautiful walk. I'm not sure I would want to drive, to actually get on a bicycle and ride this thing because you'd miss too much. Like, mm -hmm. there's just so much around here that's cool to look at. And when you're on that bike paying attention to where you're going and trying not to crash, uh, you don't get to see any of this. Little flowers along the side of the road. Um, copperheads on the side of the road. That guy on the bike saw the copperhead. He we saw missed it yeah. walking. A couple of bikes went by after he had stopped and said that we're guessing that they probably scared the copper hat off. Uh, but yeah, glad, glad it wasn't us. But uh, yeah, certainly a cool trail. We got some sheep dogs over here stopping to say hi. Hey, the sheep are all the way up there. Who's watching the sheep? back at the Christmas tree farm area. But yeah, they're doing a good job of watching the sheep. That's for sure. Yeah. <laughs> Hi.
So just walking along the trail and we happened to notice this thing that looked like kind of a, a shaped out fort where you could, uh, you could set some things over top of it and some leaves and whatnot and stay quite well protected in there. But uh, as you can see, one of them is uh, broken off. I mean, that's gotta be about 12 feet up, if not a little more. And uh, you know, people aren't gonna break things off that are that far up. So kind of interesting, kind of makes you wonder. So what do we got here? So finally, I think I found what they call Virginia creeper. It's, uh, you know, the ones with five leaves. Sort of looks like a marijuana leaf, only the leaves are quite a bit fatter. And it's a ground growing vine. It'll crawl up anything though. But uh, definitely looks like some Virginia creeper here. That's not sound effects. That's really there. Right. Yeah. yeah. So we made it back down the Virginia Creeper Trail, and yes. uh, it it was a pretty neat walk. It was. Say? Yeah, it was a really nice walk. I mean, there's so much flora and fauna off to the sides of the road. So many things to look at. These giant, you know, boulder cliffs and stuff to the either side, and and then of course the creek, and there's there's these little farms off to the side. So you get a you get kind of a variety of different scenery uh, walking down here. We did notice that the one that we took starting up here and going towards the creek junction was all downhill. And that's probably something you won't find documented anywhere. There was a guy that was coming the opposite direction when we were walking down there and he was about to die because it was just a slight grade uphill, but it was like for a long ways that it had the slight grade. So if you want kind of an easier walk, um, my suggestion would be to start here like we did walk down that way and have somebody meet you down at the creek junction yeah because you don't want to have to walk back like we did right <laughs> but it's definitely a neat walk it's yes. neat walking here with such an old trail thinking mm -hmm. about the native americans that came along yeah pioneers and the railroad daniel and boone. daniel boone yeah. none other than yeah but i definitely recommend it i'd like to take the full 30 miles on a bike 36 miles on a bike not doing that might do that one of these days hook a gopro to the front and see what we come up with <laughs> but for now just a small portion yeah of the virginia creeper trail